everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. I feel like I haven't seen you in so long. I've been on vacation for a couple of weeks and I think before that I had, you know, was only posting a few videos because I had some other stuff going on. I just felt like we haven't seen each other in a while so I wanted to sit down and chat a little bit and tell you what I've been up to and just talk about stuff, right? Um, but there is one thing that first I did want to tell you that you know I posted that Janu results video a couple weeks ago at the time I was trying to get a promotional discount code for you guys if you did like the product and want to buy it and um, Unfortunately, I didn't have it when I posted that video But I did get it about I don't know maybe a week and a half ago And so I put it in the info bar below the video so that if anyone has watched it since then They would see that there was a promo code, but in the first week when most people watched it I didn't have the promo code on there so if you were interested in purchasing the product Janu is offering a 20% discount if you go to their website which is www.genu.com and put in the promo code Angie VIP and I will post that here in the video and I'll also post the link below and it's also on my Genu video now if you did buy the product because of my video and you bought it at full price I'm going to email um, my contact person there today and just see if they would honor the promo code retroactively to when my video was posted so that if you did buy it at full price that you could get the 20% off um, let's hope this works they seem like reasonable and nice people and um, the promo code is good until September 6th okay so that was the first thing I just wanted to tell you that as soon as possible it doesn't matter to me if you buy the thing or not I don't get anything if you buy it I'm certainly not making any money by putting the video out there I did see some results and I thought it was you know reasonable product so it's up to you if you liked it you want to buy it you can get 20% off I like saving money that's what I like so anyway Back to what's been going on for the last two weeks. Uh, right at the beginning of my vacation, it was my birthday. I turned 51 this year, and my gosh, it was so much easier than turning 50. Birthdays that begin with a five, they are difficult. You know, I feel like leading up to it through the end of my 40s, it was just looming out there like in the distance and I was dreading it. And last summer when I was turning 50, I was kind of in a little bit of a funk all summer. I was kind of like, ugh. You know, people were asking me, are you having a big party? Are you going to celebrate? I was like, you know what? I really don't feel like celebrating this. I'm not that happy about it. Um, and so I ended up just having a family dinner with my extended family. And it was a great time, but I wasn't like, woohoo, you know, let's party and celebrate. I got to say turning 51 this year, much, much easier. I feel like that's how it is with the big numbers. And especially, I mean, I know people feel like that when they turn 30, but really when you're 30, you are still young. Even 40, you're still pretty young. And I know a lot of people say, you know, what difference does it make? It's just a number. And while it is just a number, it's also that things start happening in your body to reinforce that it is more than a number. For example, when I was younger, I could go out and ride 30 miles on a Saturday without any prep, without any uh, soreness afterwards, no problem. Now that I'm 50, if I want to ride 30 miles, I can do it, but it's much, much harder. And I'm so tired in the afternoon the same day. I really need a nap, whereas that would have never happened in my 30s. So anyway, my point is just that, yeah, you know, 50, 60, 70, whatever is just a number, but your body doesn't think it's just a number because it's not all in your head. There are physical changes that happen at every age and I would love to hear from you and let me know if you've turned 50 or if you've turned 45 that you noticed that the changes started happening. I gotta say like the minute I turned 40 was when my eyesight sight started getting a little fuzzy and I noticed that all of a sudden at restaurants I had to hold the menu a little farther away and if the light was a little dim you know I could still see but that was when I had to start squinting at things and it kept very very slowly declining over the years but now that between like 50 and 51 I feel like there's been a huge difference in my vision and uh, it kind of drives me crazy because as you know when you see me in my videos and I'm trying to do makeup I can't see what I'm doing um, and it used to be just the up close stuff that I couldn't see but now it's getting to be that even my three foot and four foot and five foot away vision is getting a little bit blurry and so I definitely need to take my eyes to the eye doctor in the next month or so and have my vision reassessed. I'm hoping I can get some like bifocal contact lenses or something but talking about the vision going I wanted to show you these sunglasses that I bought this year 
what a lifesaver they were. My gosh, I feel like these things were a godsend. So um, let me show them to you. They're bifocal sunglasses. I got them from a company called Peepers. So on the Peepers website, I ended up buying like four or five pairs of readers for all different occasions. Um, I got these tiny ones. Those are super lightweight for my purse. And look what I got for putting on makeup. <laughs> Are these the craziest things you've ever seen? But, you know, I guess you're supposed to be able to do this eye and then, while well, looking through this eye, and then you switch it over here and you can do this eye. I have tried it a few times. There's like too much plastic around here. I can't get the wand in there to actually do my eye makeup with it. But I'm going to keep working with them and try them out. But the ones that I really love and wanted to show you were the sunglasses because I love nothing more than reading on the beach. So anyway, I got these bifocals. And these, I think, you know, they're very cool looking sunglasses. I'm, my kids say that you can see the bifocal. It's right down here. I don't really think that you can see them very well. They're, you know, fashionable. They're big. They <laughs> shade my whole eye. The top is just clear plastic so I can see through when I ride my bike down to the beach. But then when I get there and open up my book and look down, I look through these guys and I can see fantastically. So I love these. I just want to show them up close so see if you can see like the little bifocal thing in there. Anyway, so um, those were terrific and I'll put the link to peepers down there as well. And again, doesn't matter to me if you buy them or not. I'm just trying to give you a resource of um, a place that I've found things and that I like. None of these were expensive. I think these were probably the most expensive and maybe there were 25 bucks. Everything else was in like the $15 price range. And of course I bought so many that I got free, free shipping, which I love because I hate to pay for shipping. Um, so those were my glasses, and speaking about reading, I love to read on the beach. I read quite a few magazines, and I tore out pages like crazy of new makeup and new products that I wanted to try this fall, so I've got a lot of videos planned with those. But we've never talked about books, and so I just wanted to tell you about the couple books that I read because I actually really like them. You'll be shocked to hear that I'm just as picky about my books as I am about my makeup. <laughs> But I read a ton and I feel like I've read everything and I'm like, what is going on with me in the books? I don't like anything. And so I read two books this summer and I love them both. So I wanted to tell you about them because, you know, if you're a reader and you're looking for a recommendation, maybe you might like these. If the topics don't appeal to you, then, you know, just bypass this section and, and uh, move on. But um, here they are. I wanted to show you my books. The first one that I read is called The Fault in Our Stars. It's by this guy, John Green. It's kind of a young adult book, which I don't really often like young adult books, but I really like this one. It is a cancer story. It's kind of sad, but I feel like the whole book itself, like while it's about the horrors of cancer and, you know, the unfairness of cancer and people who get it and live with it, it's also a story about life and, you know, how to live and positive attitude. It's about a couple of teenagers who, you know, are going through cancer. And anyway, you'll cry, you'll laugh. It's a great book. I loved it. Um, my daughter had read it and recommended it to me. And I was like, yeah, why not? So I like that one. This one, I think I picked up at Costco. And this is by Chris Bohalian, who is an author that I've read um, two of his other books, Midwives and Transistor Radio. And they were both excellent. And I love his writing. So when I saw this book out there, I thought, oh, let me give him another shot. It's called The Sandcastle Girls. And this is a book that's about the Armenian genocide in, in 1915 and 1916, which I, until about seven years ago, was fairly completely unaware that that had happened. You know, there's so much about um, the Holocaust, and I've probably read 50 books about the Holocaust. And this is a topic that was new to me. My kids learned about it in school, so that's where I first heard about it, maybe seven years ago. It's a really interesting story. It has a storyline from 1915, and it has a storyline from today. So I'm not quite finished with it yet. Here's my bookmarker. I have about, I don't know, maybe uh, less than a third or a quarter left, and I can't wait to finish it. I look forward to reading it every day, which is a sign of a good book for me if you look forward to picking it up again. So those were my beach reads this summer. I really enjoyed them. I can highly recommend them. If you're looking for something to read, maybe, you know, try to pick up one of those too. Um, let's see, what else? So when I left you a couple weeks ago, my face was breaking out like crazy. I couldn't figure out why. I was like, please help me if anybody knows um, anything that I can do about this. I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much for all your comments and suggestions. I People suggested that I try um, taking turmeric pills, which I did. Um, 
to try salicylic acid, which I did. I got a tea tree, oh, lots of people said tea tree oil. I got a tea tree oil toner and a tea tree oil spot treatment. And I gotta say, as much as I appreciate all your um, help, none of that worked. So I was like, oh my gosh, what is, what is the problem? Because, you know, I use Retin-A, which is, and started as an acne medication, and I also use glycolic acid. So I'm like, God, if I'm using the two number one acne fighters, um, and salicylic acid, why is this not going away? And it was like right in this area and right in this area. It seemed like every day a new pimple would pop up. And so now I'm polka dotted here with scars, but at least the bumps have gone down for the most part now. And I feel like the changing point was when I went on vacation because it had been really hot and humid here. But when I went there, I was at the beach and it was really cool. It was just like the weather pattern had just changed. All of a sudden it was 73 degrees for the high. There was no humidity. And I feel like my face just started, you know, clearing up on its own. Plus, since I was on a beach vacation where it's super casual and I don't do anything but walk to the beach and walk back to the house, I wasn't really wearing any makeup. So I was like, oh, great, it's finally clearing up. But I didn't really know why, except that the humidity had broken. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, of course, I start Googling things and I'm like, you know, what's going on? And finally, I hit on one website that was about talking about how people with combination or you know slightly oily skin who can use all the products with the silicones all in the winter and not have a problem suddenly when the heat and humidity of summer kicks in that all the silicones on your face build up and you know your pores get clogged where normally they don't and it just has something to do with the combination of the weather and the silicones so I was like, oh, well, I'm down here. I'm not wearing any makeup, so there's one layer of silicone down. But let me check all my other products and see how much silicones I'm actually using. And oh my gosh, you can't believe. You can't even find a product really without silicones in it. It is crazy. Of the things that I layer on my face in the morning, I basically had five layers of silicone on my face before I even walked out the door every day. So I decided to cut back on those, but I've been doing an epic search to replace those items with like a silicone-free sunblock and a silicone-free um, antioxidant serum. Very hard to find. I've been doing searches and searches and searches, and I got to say I found a couple of products. One is a silicone-free uh, primer that I'm trying. Another I'm going to go look at this week is um, uh, Laura Mercier has a silicone-free foundation, Supreme something. I guess it's reformulated. People don't like the new formula as much, but I didn't use the old one, so I'm going to try this one. Um, but looking for a sunscreen that is silicone free is really hard. I ordered something off Amazon the other night. I'm going to see how that goes. So anyway, just to let you know that that's what I'm doing, and those are the kind of things I might be experimenting with pretty soon. Although September's coming right around the corner, so as soon as the weather changes and it's not so hot and humid, this could all just disappear and I could go back to using my silicone-based products. So I hope to get this whole issue with my skin cleared up and um, hopefully I will have good things to report to you on some silicone-free products that I've been looking into and ordered. Oh my gosh, there's a little tiny fruit fly <laughs> buzzing around. Um, but now that I'm back home, it's hot, hot, hot and humid here again, so hopefully my face isn't going to start erupting again. I'm hoping that, you know, this fewer silicones will help me out there. Oh, what else? Oh, I haven't done a cooking video in a while, and I really didn't cook anything spectacular on vacation, but I did cook one thing. It started off I was going to make a bruschetta or like a flatbread, yeah, like a flatbread thing. Um, it started off as that, so I did kale and white beans and garlic and stuff and then put it on top of these flatbreads. It was delicious, but I had so much left over that I decided to make soup out of the rest, and it was fantastic. My family loved it, and so I'll be sharing that recipe with you soon. So that was pretty much it for today. I just wanted to touch base with you guys, see how you're doing. If you're having a great summer, I'm happy to be back with you. I missed you guys, and thanks for watching, as always, and take care. Bye-bye.